Hello everyone, my name is Winters and welcome back to this Let's Play series of Star Trek Online. So in this episode we are going to cover uh, all of the changes and updates that have been made to the game since our last episode. Uh, so it's going to be a state of the game episode. Uh, it shouldn't be as long as our last state of the game episode, just to let you know that. Uh, we're also going to do some updates, uh, or bring you guys uh, up to speed on updates and changes that I've made to my character as well. Um, now, uh, before we jump into that, I just want to apologize to everybody um, because uh, it has been quite some time since I recorded an episode, uh, either for this Let's Play series or any of the other series that I'm uh, working on. And the reason for that is because I've been working on a number of different things uh, in real life and also to do with the game. Uh, most notably, in game, uh, like a month or two ago, uh, we had the anniversary. Uh, so I was working really, really hard on grinding out Omega on my main account. Um, and uh, I ended up with like 303 Omega tech upgrades. Anyone who's done the Omega uh, uh, mini game um, or the event indeed uh, will realize that that is quite an achievement uh, in itself. Um, okay, uh, I see we have a server not responding. I hope that's not going to kick me out. Why is it giving me a server not responding? Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover endeavors. Uh, so through normal gameplay, um, you know, like when there's a featured TFO event or whatever, uh, I've been able to do some work on my endeavors. And uh, as you can see here, I have currently got stockpiled eight perk points um, that I have managed to get. Now, I don't work on this character um for endeavors uh, because I've got my main account and that one I'm grinding out this one is just like you know passively if I happen to complete an endeavor great if I don't I don't worry about it uh, so we're gonna spend these perk points now so uh, let's see max health max shields max shields hardness let's go for this one max shield hardness okay and we'll select another uh, resist uh, critical chance space definitely going for that or critical chance ground not space sorry we're definitely going for that one uh, projectile weapon no damage resist shield hardness ground we're going for uh, another one max hull space uh, yep we'll go for that one and we'll get another uh, projectile weapon no hull regeneration hell yeah we'll definitely go for that good uh, defensive one Term rate space, crit severity ground again. Oh no, we didn't have crit severity, we had crit chance ground, that was it. Uh, damage resist, shield hardness, health regeneration ground, yep. And I think we have one more, uh, so we'll spend that one. Resist, uh, sprint speed, kit performance, we'll go for kit performance. Okay, so that has brought us up to Endeavor rank 17. Um, it's not great. But like I said, I'm not working on this account um, uh, to grind it out. Uh, at, th at some stage, do you know what I'll probably do? When I finish my main, when that, car when that account is finished with the Endeavor system, then I might start working on this one. Because it takes like a little over two years to complete the, the entire system. As you guys know, I've told you that before. Um, that's if you're grinding it out every day, doing every single endeavor that you can do. It's a little over two years. Uh, right, so that's endeavors. Uh, the next thing we have are uh, endeavor boxes uh, for rewards. So we're going to fly through them here and see what we get. Uh, 50,000 energy credits, uh, another 50,000, and a reroll token, another 50,000. I like it. Crap, R&D materials. I hate R&D materials. 150,000, that's good. Another 150,000. Some R&D mats, R&D mats. 50,000, 1,000 dilithium ore, that's good. Um, a reroll token, an R&D. Uh, 150,000 and a reroll token. 500,000, yeah, baby. 1,000 dilithium, uh, some R&D mats. 50,000. And now we go on to the rare boxes. 150,000, some R&D mats. Uh, 200,000. Uh, R&D mats and a thousand dilithium, one hundred fifty thousand reroll token and thousand dilithium. Yes, please. Uh, Fifty thousand and some R&D mats and a reroll token. Another reroll token and three hundred thousand. Uh, perk point. Yes, quarter specialization point and one hundred fifty thousand energy credits and a reroll token. Now moving on to the very rare boxes. 
another reroll token. R and D mats uh, through three hundred and fifty thousand, I think. Uh, Mark's box, yes, some R and D mats, a thousand dilithium ore, and one hundred fifty thousand energy credits. R and D mats, fifty thousand energy credits. Another Mark's box. Uh, R&D mats and 150,000 energy credits. Uh, 150,000 energy credits and R&D mats. Uh, 300,000 energy credits. 1,000 dilithium ore marks box and quarter specialization point. That's really good. That was a great box, that one. Uh, 1,000 dilithium ore, 100,000 energy credits, R&D mats and a quarter specialization point. A reroll token, 100 marks box. Uh, 200,000 energy credits and some R&D mats, not bad. Uh, another reroll token, that'll be what, 200,000, 300,000 energy credits and some R&D mats. Uh, 150,000, 1,000 dilithium ore and R&D mats. And we have, uh, what's that, that's 300, uh, so that'd be 400,000 energy credits and some R&D mats. Then we have uh, R&D material, 1,000 dilithium ore, 100,000 energy credits, then we have a reroll token, um, 550,000 energy credits, some R&D mats, and a quarter specialization point. Uh, another reroll token, Mark's box, and 200,000 energy credits. And another reroll token, uh, 250,000 energy credits, and some R&D mats. Right, last two boxes <clears throat> R&D mats, and 100,000 energy credits. And. 100,000 energy credits, R&D mats, and a Mark's box. So, look, we got, like, nearly 600... 600? Nearly 6 million energy credits from all of that. That that, that was brilliant. That was really, really good. Okay. Uh, now, I'm hanging on to these boxes um, for another character on this account. And uh, I'm going to put them in here. And I will transfer them later. Uh, because uh, obviously it's a new character and they don't have any progress made on the various reputations uh, so I'm going to transfer them uh, see here I have some specialization points banked up as well you see um, okay so we'll do that there <clears throat> okay so we talked about endeavors uh, the rewards for them uh, next thing we want to cover um, we've had a number of events since our last episode um, We've had the winter event, which I don't think I talked about. Uh, we got a Fakiri ship uh, during that, uh, which was pretty cool. It was utilizing the new event system. Uh, we've had the anniversary as well, um, which uh, had uh, an event uh, in on itself, um, which was... Uh, oh, what was this? Uh, oh, the Omega Mini game, of course. We've had a featured TFO... And uh, now we're on to First Contact Day. Um, there is a new event campaign going on. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, a featured event, Battle at Binary Stars. Uh, this is a new uh, event campaign. There is going to be four events in it. One, two, three, four. Uh, the first event was Battle at Binary Stars. And uh, this time... Uh, we have to earn 2,800 experience. Uh, every 20 hours you can earn 50 experience. You can see I already have uh, 1,050 built up. Once I have the 2,800 experience built up, I can then pick either 1,000 lobby crystals or a T6 uh, Z store discount coupon uh, plus 200 lobby. Uh, I don't know what one I'm going to go for. I'm probably going to go for this one, to tell you the truth. I'm probably going to go for the 100% discount uh, in the Z store. And uh, I will probably pick a new ship. We will probably be uh, replacing our current ship. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking now. Uh, I know some of you will have noticed. I, I do still have a token here, uh, as it is. So this will be our third token. Remember I used our first one was on the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, Valiant, the Valiant class, tactical, tactical Escort Valiant class. That's what I used the first one on. Uh, so we have this one here, and now we're about to get another one as well in a few months' time. Uh, so I'm saving this one for the KDF side, most likely. And 
The next one that we get, I'll probably pick up a new ship on the Federation side for this character. I have no idea what ship I'm going to pick, but I'm going to pick one uh, and uh, get a new ship. Sorry about that, my phone going off there. I should have put that on mute, which it is on now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's what's going on. Uh, currently, uh, First Contact Day is going on. Um, after First Contact Day, we're going to have a new event. We don't know how or when exactly that's going to drop. We don't know what it's going to be, uh, but it's going to arrive at some stage. But the main thing I wanted to communicate to you guys is that we are getting, uh, or there is a new event campaign currently going on, and um, we have the choice of either a 1,000 lobby, which they haven't done before, or the T6 coupon with 200 lobby. Um, right. Uh... Next, um, yes, First Contact Day is going on. They've made a change. Uh, First Contact Day is now a three-week long event. And uh, in order to complete it, you have a choice uh, of two options. You can either do the model rocket launch TFO, which is uh, the uh, TFO that takes place um, uh, in Bozeman, Montana, where you collect parts and you launch your own Phoenix uh, rocket. Or you have this brand new patrol called One Night in Bozeman. Uh, again, Bozeman, Montana. Uh, this is a very unique patrol because all patrols in-game currently, except for this one, are space. This is actually a ground patrol. Uh, and uh, this is how we should expect First Contact Day uh, to continue on for the foreseeable future. We will have these two... Uh, uh, build, uh, pieces of content uh, to do during First Contact Day from here on out for the foreseeable future of Star Trek Online. Uh, as you can see, we have to do 14 days uh, and I have 7 days done, so I'm actually halfway through it. We get a special item and uh, once you complete the 14 days, there are still 7 days left on it if you've been doing it every day and uh, you will get Dilithium um, uh, once you've completed the 14 days. Uh, this time around, instead of two and a half thousand for the first day and five thousand for the second, then seven and a half thousand, then ten thousand, going up in two and a half thousand increments. Uh, this time, uh, and this is how they done the last feature TFO event as well. On day one, you get eight thousand dilithium ore, but it only goes up by one thousand every day. So the second day is nine thousand, the third day is ten thousand, fourth day is eleven thousand, and it keeps on going up. So it's hard to know if that's uh, uh, better or worse, good or bad. Don't really know. Uh, free stuff is always great, so that's probably the only thing we can agree on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, next thing that I want to bring you guys up to speed on is there has been a number of changes uh, made to the Admiralty system. Uh, most notably, uh, and... God, I'm so glad that they've made this change because it's a nightmare on my main account and you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, instead of having to claim each individual ship and dismiss it uh, to, in order to get your Admiralty cards, um, ships auto-claim now from the Z-Store. So once you reach level 52 and unlock the Admiralty system, any ship that you have in the Z-Store or from the winter event, the summer event, the anniversary, whatever, auto-claim straight away. And you don't have to claim the ships and use up ship slots and that crap. It just auto-claims the cards and you're done. There are a small handful, and I mean a handful of ships. There's not even a half a dozen ships uh, that you still have to claim. I think it's like four ships. Um, you can check out Star Trek Online for that. Uh, if, if memory serves, it's, um, I think, uh, the uh, Scorpion, uh, which is the Romulan small craft. Actually, you can see it here. Um, small craft. This bad boy. Uh, I think this is one of them. Don't hold me to that. I just think that this is one of the ships that have to be uh, manually claimed. Uh, this is two or three others as well, I'm not sure which ones they are, but you can check that out yourself on StarTrekOnline.com um, Right uh, I suppose the next thing I should tell you guys is uh, there's been a, a, a 
quite a change made to the Z store as well and ships themselves. Uh, you may have noticed up here we have tier 6, tier 5 and then tier 1 through 4 reclaim. Um, basically what they've done is tier 1 through tier 4 you no longer purchase with Zen in the Z store with the exception of the prototype light exploration cruiser. Uh, instead now you purchase them for Dilithium and at a significant discount from what they previously were as well might I add. Um, however, if you had purchased any ships that were in the tier 1 through tier 4 category, they will now be in this reclaim tab of the Z store and you still have access to them across your entire account. If there was any that you didn't have access to, then uh, they are now available uh, down at the shipyard and uh, you can purchase them for Dilithium. However, they are a character unlock. So if I purchase one of the ships now from the ship vendor, it only unlocks on this character, not all characters. But like I said, it's for a significant discount. Now ships that were already purchasable through the, the ship vendor here at the shipyard for Dilithium. They've also received a significant discount. If you look here, look, this tier 1 ship is only 850 Dilithium. And this tier 2 ship is only 2,125 Dilithium. And it keeps on going that way. Look, 2,125. Uh, same there. Same there. And then we go up to the next tier. 4,250. And uh, it just keeps on going that way, which is fantastic. It's an absolutely brilliant update. Um, and like I said, if you uh, look at this, see, eight and a half thousand is nothing. It is so cheap. Um, so if you are a free to play player, and remember, this entire Let's Play series was done on a brand new free to play account. And if you find the Admiralty system difficult because of a lack of ships, you can now pick up a crap ton of ships from the ship vendor for Dilithium at a seriously discounted rate uh, compared to what they were. Uh, so yeah, um, this is now where you get your tier 1 through tier 4 ships. So you might, let, let's say particularly on the KDF side, all right, uh, the KDF, uh, one of the best ships you could ever buy on the KDF side was the Vandal Destroyer because it came with the Plasmonic Leech, which meant it was a free once you bought it, it was a free console uh, across your entire account for all KDF Online characters. Um, and um, uh, if you had purchased it before, you still have it now for all KDF characters. But if you haven't, uh, now you come to the ship vendor on Kronos and you... Um, talk to him and you simply find the Vandal Destroyer in the list and you purchase it for whatever amount of Dilithium. And there you go, you're done. Um, and trust me, this is a significant discount. So if, if you took like, uh, let's say a ship that costs 1500 Zen, uh, the Dilithium equivalent is a couple of hundred thousand uh, Dilithium to get 1500 Zen. Uh, actually here, look, we'll do it right now. Um, uh, to, 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 to buy buy Zen right. Uh, I want to buy fifteen hundred. There you go. Uh, it's nearly six hundred thousand Zen at the current price, or six hundred thousand Dilithium. Sorry, at the current price, uh, and instead now you buy it for a couple of thousand Zen. So you can see what I mean by a significant dis discount. Uh, while we're here uh, on the Dilithium exchange, this is the next thing I want to bring you guys up to speed on. Um, they made another significant change to the game and it was because of the uh, Dilithium to Zen uh, exchange rates. Um, some of you or most of you will probably know that up until a month or two ago uh, the price for a single piece of Zen was nearly 500. All right? It actually did reach 500. Um, 500 Dilithium per Zen. It was 
astronomical cost. It just kept on going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And uh, this change now with the Z store uh, purchasing T1 through tier 4 with Dilithium is part of the process of trying to reduce uh, that Dilithium to Zen cost. And it's working. It really is working. Because now people aren't converting as much Dilithium into Zen in order to make the purchase from the Z store. Instead, they're just paying straight out Dilithium. And it, it is lowering the cost uh, of Zen on the Z store. But the thing, the other thing that they done was, uh, we all know the Phoenix Tech upgrades. Uh, remember it was a Phoenix event? They have permanently added Phoenix boxes into the Dilithium store permanently in-game. And this was another change that they made in an effort to tackle the extremely high prices on the Dilithium exchange by adding these boxes. And basically what it's done is people are no longer... People are still converting Dilithium into Zen, uh, but a large chunk of that Dilithium is now going into Phoenix prize packs uh, at a regular basis and uh, like I said the exchange was up at 500 I was actually watching it here one night and it went to 500 it jumped up like 20 points uh, in the space of one evening and it actually reached 500 and uh, you can see it now 393 and it's been stable at that for a few days pretty much uh, with a, you know, a little bit in give and take here and there um, so yes uh, now you can purchase Phoenix prize packs permanently in the Dil uh, Dilithium store <clears throat> and it is a great update to the game a, a fantastic change um, right okay uh, so let's see endeavors event system campaigns admiralty change first contact day we talked about uh, Dilithium exchange we talked about uh, auto claiming admiralty ships we talked about Phoenix prize boxes we talked about T1 through tier 4 we talked about here's another change that they made um, you may remember um, that uh, R&D materials in particular uh, would stack up to 999 per stack. Uh, well, basically, they've made a change where uh, now instead of going to 999 uh, per stack, it now goes to 9,999 per stack. Uh, which is fantastic because my uh, R&D tab here was down to about here, roughly. This is roughly where it was. So I was nearly full. I, I nearly didn't have any uh, slots left for R&D materials. And uh, when they increased the stacking limit, uh, I, it, it stacked everything up here and it brought it up to this this far. So I've got like 50% of my uh, R&D space back, which is fantastic. It's brilliant. Um on top of that, uh, lock boxes now stack up to the same amount as well, 9,999, and a couple of other things like um, uh, ship components, for example, and uh, regenerators, and uh, I, I want to say commodities as well. I think commodities do. I'm not... No, actually, no. Commodities still go to 250. Yeah. All right, forget that last one. Uh, but... Um, these uh, Starship components uh, now stack up to 9,000, uh, 9, yeah, and yeah, and these as well, the regenerators, but uh, these things, the commodities do not. Um, again, you can check out StarTrekOnline.com uh, for a full list of all of the stuff that does stack, um, but most notably, it's the R&D stuff, which is just an, a brilliant change to the game. It's absolutely fantastic and uh, has made things much, much easier. Uh, right, uh, next thing we're going to talk about actually is uh, some changes and updates that I've made to this character. Uh, so we will start off with uh, ship stuff. Um, I've put on this turret, uh, I, to be honest I don't know why I didn't put this on earlier. Uh, it comes from the mission Beyond the Nexus which is in the New Frontier story arc. Uh, I've put this on along with this console, uh, 
and the two piece set bonus and this is the reason why I've, I've put it on it gives a 5% firing cycle haste for energy weapons and plus 15 flight speed just for the two piece set bonus so there's the console there's the energy weapon and uh, yeah I've decided to put that on here um, Oh, yes, um, I have replaced the Colony Warp Core and Deflector that I did have on here with the Iconian Warp Core and Deflector. Um, I just... It's not necessarily because of stats, uh, but the uh, the two-piece set bonus is really good, which is the Enhanced Shield Penetration, which is like a, a free shield heal, which is really, really good. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I've favored this two-piece set bonus uh, over the Colony uh, two-piece that I was running. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Colony is still really, really good, but I was like, do you know what, I think I might just try this and it might be just a little bit better because of the two-piece set bonus. And I'm still using the um, Bajor Defense uh, set, two-piece set, which is the uh, Impulse Engine and the uh, Shield is what I'm using there. Um... Right, the next upgrade event, I am going to upgrade all of this stuff up to Mark 15, because as you can see, it's all currently at Mark 14, and some of the new stuff I've added is Mark 12. So the next upgrade event that we get, I will be doing that. Um, next, I have done a skill tree respec on this character. And as I scroll down here, you might be thinking, well, this kind of looks like the same skill tree that you had. Well, do you know what? You're very, very close to being right. You, you're, yeah, because it is pretty close to it. Uh, most notably where there's changes. Uh, I used to have a point here and a point here in um, ca uh, hull capacity and shield capacity. And instead, I've put them into control expertise and improved control expertise. I also had a point in advanced targeting expertise and advanced defensive maneuvering. Uh, and you can see now there's only two points in each instead of three. And what I've done is I've put those two points into exotic particle generator and exotic par improved uh, exotic particle generator. So it's really these two here that have changed or that have been added. Yeah, added and this has been reduced by one. and these two have been reduced by one each as well. The reason why I've done that is because uh, I do use a gravity well on this build and uh, this point here, th uh, this part of the skill tree here improves the um, uh, pull effect of the gravity well and uh, particle generator improves the exotic damage that comes from the gravity well itself. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I've done there. Um, if you want to mimic this skill tree, uh, you can uh, just pause the video to uh, get a look at it. There's here's the top part. So uh, lieutenant, lieutenant commander, and commander, and then here is uh, captain and admiral. Uh, but it's not that different from our previous skill tree. Um, next up. Uh, I don't think there's any changes in traits. No, there's no changes there. But in stations there is. Um, I still have my uh, Attack Team 1, Attack Battery and Bait 1, and Cannon Scatter, Cannon Scatter Volley 2 there. But here, in this Commander Tactical, uh, I still have the Attack Team 1, the Attack Battery and Bait 1. But now, I've got a Chemo Sight List Weaponry 3, which I purchased from the Exchange. And I have a Cannon Scatter Volley 3, which, again, I purchased from the Exchange. And uh, that way I have two Attack Teams, two Attack Patterns, two Cannon Scatter Volleys, and now I have this bonus item of Chemocyte Lace Weaponry. Instead of having three Attack Patterns, which, do you know what, Omega was good, but do you know what, the, the cooldown on it is just so long, uh, I decided to go this way instead. So that's a diff uh, another change that I've made uh, since our last video as well. Um, I don't think there is anything else to tell you the truth. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Reputations are already done. You all know that. Um, trying to think, was there anything else? I don't think there was. Uh, Smallcraft, they're still in the Z store. Uh, if you did have any of the T1 through tier 4 ships purchased previously, they will now appear here. They're not appearing for me because I haven't bought any on this account. 
T5 are still in the Z store and T6 are still in the Z store. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Mm. Yeah, okay. I think that's it. Um, so what you can expect in future episodes. Uh, we are going to do an episode on uh, each of these. We'll do one on the model rocket and we'll do one uh, for the one night in Bozeman. Uh, there has been two new episodes released. Um, one is called The Measure of Morality Part 1 and then Measure of Morality Part 2. Uh, so you can expect episodes uh, on all of that stuff to come up here in the not too distant future. Uh, in fact, actually, um, the day after I release this video, I'm probably going to start. I don't know if I'm going to do these first or if I'm going to do um, these first. I, I, I don't know yet, but um, this is just some other content that you can expect uh, to come up. Oh, yeah, something else as well. Uh, my uh, Winter's Budget Build Series. I am going to do this build uh, in my budget build series. Um, so if you want a detailed explanation of this build, all of its gear, um, uh, specialization, skill tree, uh, traits and all that, um, you can expect to see that coming up in the not too distant future as well on my channel. And um, yeah, um, that's just what you've got to look forward to. Uh, thank you all so much as well, by the way. Uh, I recently hit and went beyond a thousand subscribers, but hitting that first 1,000 subscribers was absolutely fantastic. And thank you all so much for your support. Um, it is so much appreciated. I really, really do appreciate it. And you guys have been fantastic. And uh, I ran a little competition as a little bit of a thank you uh, for that as well. Um, so thanks a million guys uh, for getting me there and um, yeah, 10,000, that's that's the next goal. Uh, we'll try and get to 10,000 and um, uh, yeah, just keep on building the channel and I'll try to keep on putting out content that you guys enjoy so that you can learn about Star Trek Online and improve yourselves even further. Uh, anyway, I guess we're going to leave it there for now. So thanks a million for watching, folks. I hope you all enjoy this episode. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe and um I'll catch you next time. So until then, stay safe, keep on trekking. I'll see you then. Adios.